Walking the Black Love Matters, where this serves as a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or finding our inner Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or who is you? I'm Neil. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 385, y'all. I think it's 395. Oh, well, 395, y'all. <laughs> Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's black with no K. What's up, y'all? What's up? We back. Look, we we go on two week vacation. We don't know what episode it is. I know, right? It actually was my fault. Um, but cool. <laughs> oh, I love when black women take accountability. It was because in the title it do say three eighty five, but in the body, y'all know we have like little notes we do to keep us kind of on track is the right one. So my bad about that, Neil. I ain't mean to scold you in the middle of it. I'm like eighty four. No, we at three ninety five. Oh, three ninety five. Because you know we, how I know we at three ninety five oh. because we almost four years in. Ooh. Ooh. What does that mean? Four years in. Four years in. Is that right? We've been doing this for four years. Ain't that madness? I don't even feel like it. Well, it depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll get to that. We'll do that in some shot um in pillow talk today. But we so happy to be back, y'all. Thank you for giving us the grace to take two weeks off. Whoever needs to hear this, if you're doing some type of if, if you're a cubicle warrior, if you're an entrepreneur, don't you fall for that Diddy early two thousand five lingo. No sleep. What do you used to say? Don't bother me, I'm working. No, no, don't bother me. We're just talking about I don't sleep or oh, don't. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That whole. Um, you know, hustle culture. Hustle. Nope. Take your damn time off, especially the cubicle warriors. You already done paid for it. So take at. I'm at the point in my career where I need at least two weeks off. If I don't need at least two weeks off, I'm not recharged, right? You need the first four to seven days just to completely decompress and separate. Then you need the other days to run errands, think new thoughts, get yourself energized to a place where you need to be. So whoever need to hear this, take it. Um, in addition to taking a couple of weeks off podcasting, I took about seven to 10 days off work mm. and I did feel refreshed by it. And even when I went to back to work, I eased into that motherfucker. You know, how sometimes when you go back to work after vacation, you just start doing a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. No, absolutely. I did it. I went to my team and was like, um, if you send me any emails while I was out, uh, I'll get to them by Friday. <laughs> if it's important, please come to me on the side, bring it right. up in a one-on-one, resend with <laughs> urgent in the, in the title. Right. Because if not, honestly, Friday or that following Monday is when I'm going to get to it. I literally took like a third or like a quarter of each of my emails every day. Like I answered the emails of that day, then I just literally worked backwards and took yeah. my time and got through it. And guess what? The world continued to turn. It sure does. And then I wasn't burnt out. I didn't hate everyone. It was amazing. So in addition to that, um, I know before we headed out, I said that I was launching a new business. I'm in full throttle of that. Ooh, hand class. I'm nervous. I am a comfortable cubicle warrior. I realized that I just needed a break to kind of be fully in on it. And I'm willing to lean in. You know, my therapist got me together and was like, because I was telling her I was having some um, anxiety around it and just moving through it and just putting myself out there mm. in a more of a public fashion. And, you know, I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm nervous, I'm going to fail. And she, y'all know my therapist is a black woman from Detroit and she gets me together. She's going to be brilliant. She's going to be worldwide one day. I already know that. So I'm trying to get lock her in now mm -hmm. where I can still afford her rates. But she was like, sis, you're not, let's be real. You're not scared of failing. Like he, she was like, cause you know, she's the one who does therapy slightly different cause it's women of color, mm -hmm. black people and stuff. She said often, you know, successful, high achieving black women, failure is not what we're scared of. Like we got this far because we fail quickly and often able to bounce back from it. Like Niram just said, you take accountability. Mm -hmm. Oh, it failed. I, I led this initiative, you know, you fall on, oh, I'm sorry. Right. Do you move on with your life and come with a new idea? She was like, it sounds to me, you scared. What happens if it works? Ooh. I wish I had some gunshots here. She was here. like, oh, not the guns. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, bow, da, 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 da. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> She was like, you nervous of what it works. And you're nervous. You might not have the capacity to stretch yourself to what it's going to mean if it's successful. Ooh, it's not, it, it's not if it, it's going to fail. It's what if it succeeds. It succeeds. And then what if it succeed, Nyambis? Then what your capacity gonna be? Then what you gonna do if then it's how just do you, a tease? Then, oh, what's it called? When you to succeed. Te to tease, okay. Then when you stretch yourself to that point, then you got decisions to make, right? Mm. You you now know you can do something independently um, or independently at least with the people you choose to do it with mm. instead of doing it with a company, right? That sometimes you like the people you work with, sometimes you don't, right? But it's, it's just different energies. And she's like, if it continues to succeed, 
you won't be able to do both. Ooh. And then which one are you going to choose? Which she said, one? but you already down the line. Yes. You, you, you months, years down the line where you just need to be in this present moment mm. and do the assignment. Understand the assignment. Ain't that what the, the Generation Z is saying? Mm-hmm. You, do you understand the assignment and do it well? Mm. So just I've been trying to hone in on myself and understand the assignment and doing the assignment well and leaning into it. Right. Again, she called me out. I don't care if I fail. Right. If I can't fail, I just like, oh, fuck, I fucked up. But Lisa, bitch, tried. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I gave it a good college try, but I did get the tension was like, shit. But what if this work out? What if it work out? And then, Miami? you know, y'all know I ain't a carefree black girl. I'm a carefree. Full scary to the motherfucker. Black girl. So I'm, I'm already trying to calculate like, well, what does that mean for me? What does it mean for the people that I love and trust and I'm going on this journey with? Right. Like, what does that I'm thinking about all of that stuff mm-hmm. in those where honestly, I just need to be in the moment. Oof. Everybody know what they signed up for. Everybody grown ups. Mm-hmm. Everyone's responsible. Right. I, I don't have to take on that extra um, luggage, which I'm using as a crutch, really. Mm. To not move forward and, you know, freeze and not be as productive as I can be. Yeah. All that stuff. It, huh? You like to worry, you know. I am a worry work. Mm-hmm. I do that a lot. And then on the other side, black love matters. Like, we're not going nowhere. You know, every mm-hmm. time we do podcasting right around our year anniversary, we'd be like, is this it? Is this it? <laughs> is it? Did you know, we was on that two-week <laughs> lag. We're like, well, do we come back and just bang it out the phone and be like, love's ever it? evolving. <laughs> Bees, and then you'll just catch us on, on what Sir Jeffrey show, uh, Cozy Womb. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna have to get on Chris and Carlo show. That's when you just we'll just do appearances, we'll mm-hmm. just ask them, Can we come over quarterly? Because yes. you know, we'll get the pot and bug, you know, because that's the stuff we'll ask our um, our pot and friends to do. But we was like, Nope, we think we're gonna still push forward, yeah. So, as of now, y'all, we still pushing through four years in, we're still moving forward. Um, we did say at this halfway point at the year, we're gonna try to start spicing it up a little bit. And we are. Um, it made me a little nervous to do some of the spicing because we have an amazing program manager that just had to take a little bit of a break, right? Because they got to do what they got to do and take care of their family. You know, we're thinking and praying for you always. Mm-hmm. But I think it made me scared because I was like, but she not here to help me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about her in a moment. She ain't here to help me. But I was like, she would be like, Nayambi, get your shit together and move forward. So I'm doing that. So it, it just makes me nervous that I'm going to um, be launching an independent business. I'm going to be doing next level, next, next level sounds so pretentious, evolution mm-hmm. <laughs> of Black Love Matters. Like, it's not going to change so much. Y'all ain't going to recognize what it was. But we hope when y'all tune in, y'all be like, yeah, yeah, Nyan be in there. I like that, right? Or like, mm-hmm. you're going to be seeing some of those changing in the next couple months. And then personally at work, you know, that stuff's going to be up and up. Y'all know I got this promotion and Ooh. those new duties start coming into place in June and July. And so it's just like this stretching that I feel that I'm going through that I'm really trying to lean into. Ooh, you know, um, a whole nother vacation is thinking about all that stuff. Well, <laughs> and that's how I know I needed the vacation because when I say it, I don't get anxiety. Where I think if I didn't take a break, I would have mm-hmm. been like, <laughs> you know, you get to breathing hard and you mm-hmm. get to list and shit. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm at a place of incitement. I'm at a place of gratitude. I'm at a place of like, when I tell you God, won't he do it and he won't he make it work? He absolutely will. Am I still nervous or I have some hesitancies? Yeah, yes. But absolutely. I'm going to just take one step in front, of the, uh, in front of the other and know that I have a community of support around me that if it becomes amazingly well, they're going to be there cheering me on. And if everything crashes and burns, I know they'll be over bringing me um, honey baked ham and lasagnas and green juice and, and grapes and they'll nurse me back to health. So mm-hmm. I'm leaning in that privilege to know I have that next. I hope my parents aren't listening. On this break, we were on a family reunion. Tell them fast forward. Look, y'all fast, fast forward, forward about five minutes. Just actually, just cut off. <laughs> this podcast is not for y'all. This, this that should be the name of four years <laughs> in. If you almost said my full name, if you're anywhere related to me, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> they gonna put this in the receipts folder, right? You know how you save some stuff mm-hmm. at the family dinner. They gonna pin. Anybody like in Nyambi said, <laughs> blah 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 blah. She don't love the family. <laughs> No, you should not. No, you should. <laughs> if you're tired of your family, that's all up in your business. business. Put your business all on their podcast. Putting their business all in the streets, <laughs> giving you unwanted advice. <laughs> Come to the sisterhood with no, no sisters. sisters. <laughs> no, I love my family, so I do that disclaimer. But I think y'all know that. Y'all know just like with the Lord, I walk a crooked path. Just with the, like I walk the Lord, and on my Christian journey, I walk a crooked path with my family. I too. Walk a very crooked, crooked path to um, inclusivity in community. Why they do this, y'all? 
Anyway, it's not that bad. We'll just scale on a scale of one to ten. I'll put it about a five or a six. Is that low? Well, one through near them. How would it's you rate? Average at best. How would you? It's actually. I'm low. about to say rate the fair reunion. No seven. I would say <laughs> six. I would say five or six, depending on the day. Yeah. And that's not that's average. Mm, it's average. It's below average at best. <laughs> but like, I'm gonna rate it a two, right? Like, it ain't yeah. one of those events where it's like, listen, y'all. What's it called when the, when you under eighteen and you file to like leave your family? Oh, um, emancipation. Yes, I'm not filing for emancipation. Yeah, like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Like that's a one or two. <laughs> How you gonna be 35 filing, filing for, for emancipation? emancipation. <laughs> like, I don't want them to contact me at all. What's that restraining order? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, about you can't be more than fifty yards. Oh, no, no, We're no. not there. Like I scale that as like one or two, right? Five to six is like it was moments of joy, and then there was moments of just niggardy. Um, where do we begin? We'll start at the easy parts. So our Ashley fam reunion took place in Tennessee, which we decided to drive. We had some hesitancy there. I think when I first heard the word drive, I was like, oh, cool. Because y'all remember, was that last year already? Mm-hmm. Y'all know we went down to Gatlinburg and the Smoky Mountains, and we did that drive, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. But something just didn't connect to me like, well, why are we driving? Because I think the pandemic too. I think the pandemic has me just in drive mode. But all of us are big vats though. I know everyone's big vats, but we've been so trained, right? We're just like little doggies. It's like Pavlov's dog, right? Like, so you try, you know, it's best to just get in the car. We can kind of limit the number of touch points we have, you know, all that stuff. So I think that's why I processed it. Because I had a couple family members who took flights and I was just like. We should have did that. Usually when people like, I'm flying, usually I'm the one to say. I'm flying. Mm-hmm. And so I should have challenged something there to be like, why aren't I the ones? And like my parents, they don't have a fear of flying. You know, some people in the Generation Z, baby boomers, they don't like flying. Like that's not my parents at all, right? Like they're completely up for flying, all that type of stuff. But for whatever reason, we in the car, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all know, well, maybe y'all don't know, Tennessee to Detroit is like literally a 45 minute flight. Yes. So again, fine. That's that. Again, that still sits. So we're driving, we're getting there, we're all loaded in the car. Oh, you know what? I think I know why we didn't drive because we took Mabel. Strike one. Mabel is laid out in the back seat like she is the queen of who? Mabel's living her best life in Michigan. Can we just say that? She is. She's just living her best life. So Mabel came, and that's fine. What would you say? My father literally drove thirty three minutes. <laughs> I'm <gonna wait> here. <laughs> <laughs> he, he throw 33 minutes it was like hey Naram, you want to start me and Naram was like what the and the thing is not the drive like we completely understood that like we were going to drive like that is not it but y'all don't understand we got in my mom's car and she's leasing a truck so we we also own petty black people stuff where it's like oh you ain't drive no mile last year and a half you ain't drove so we need to put some miles up on this car because in our head as a lease you ain't done paid for the miles so mm-hmm. that we drive my mom's car which is a truck but it's tighter. It's, it's like a smaller truck. It's like a CUV. Yeah, it's like a smaller truck. So we, you know, we thicker people, but still comfortable enough for us to go down there. But you know, to get in the family reunion, we don't pack snacks, we don't pack suitcases. Mabel got water bottles, you know. So we pretty snug up in there, right? Cool. So for what's to stop, we just got ourselves set up enough so we could just move our legs and go to the bathroom and come back. Mm-hmm. So we thinking, oh, okay, 33 minutes in. Maybe folks, you know, we don't have coffee. Maybe folks need to go to the bathroom real quick. This nigga done drove from Detroit to Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I was like, well, maybe, you know, folks been up early because we left early. We left at six. Maybe folks done had their little coffee. You know how coffee do you. Coffee, 45 minutes, you got to go to the bathroom. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe this is just our coffee. You know, because you got your caffeine coffee break to go um, do what you got to do in the bathroom. Cool, cool. Not even thinking twice about it. And then what do you hit you with, Nero? Nero, you want to take us in? <laughs> what was your thoughts? Uh-oh. Again, not the drive is not the bad part, but we done Tetris our ass. You know the game Tetris. We done Tetris our ass. All the way in these damn cars. In these tiny cars where everything fits perfectly. And now we got to what? Move around. So we coming out. Maple snacks falling out the car. We try to adjust. We trying to get the GPS. We trying to get the sound going. And we did it. And then we what? Drive on what? Mm, on down the road. Neom drove up from, <laughs> Neom drove from Toledo to <laughs> Tennessee to <laughs> To lead on the Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all do the math. <laughs> and we'll just say my father drove from Detroit to Toledo. <laughs> Tell him the distance, Nero. Tell him how far Detroit and Toledo is. Some people think Toledo is Michigan. It's not. That's how close it is. It's very close. 
<laughs> Mary, you want to get over here? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Me still- and Neil was like, we could have started. <laughs> we could have just did the whole thing. Detroit to the lead on 58 miles. <laughs> <laughs> We was like, well, why didn't y'all just let us do it then? Y'all could have literally been backseat drivers. <laughs> Neil took us on in, mm-hmm. which uh, I don't know if you can talk about in your update, which is fine, uneventful, which I always grateful how that's how road trips go. Um, but then we got in Tennessee. How much of some tea we going to spill? Only a little tea. Whatever tea you want is this your family. So you Oh, now you ain't in the family. <laughs> you going to deal now, with Now Nero you going to have to deal with whatever phone calls and looks you Now Nero I'm talking about I'm just simply a guest here. I don't I would never disrespect. <laughs> I'm, I'm just chilling. I almost gave my last name. I would never disrespect this family. I'm I not, never this disrespect this family. has no home training at all. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth because outside open and that mean outside open we ain't seen each other so that mean all these family reunions about to pop out of nowhere and about mm-hmm. to be some bullshit. Yes. Um I'll keep a high level. So, y'all think, remember I said we went to Nashville? No, we went outside of Nashville. Why did we do that? Not sure. Just know we ended at a state park in a cabin. Not a Gatlinburg cabin. No. Summer camp cabin. <laughs> and you already know how Nyambi like to roll. Now, imagine, not my mother is like 10 at me. What did you say? Yes. Maybe 10 x 5 at me. 20 x And I would argue bougier. Yes. Well, just that I, people kind of give me the bougie, and I wear bougie with a badge, right? I don't care if people call me bougie. You know, the Gen X is be bougie, but she bougie bougie. So just play that out. Yeah, you know, she from the Diddy era. Yeah, <laughs> shiny suits and fucking furs. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got on a shiny suit and a fur at the same time to go to Tennessee <laughs> <laughs> to the cabin <laughs> in the woods? So that happened, but surprisingly, she hung tight. We was lucky enough. Near him, actually had some friends. Outside of, I don't even name the city because I feel like you could then figure out mm-hmm. out of the country, which was like thirty minutes. It was like literally, it's Franklin. I'm happy to say that part. So Nerum had some friends in Franklin, Tennessee, which is in between like the Nashville and the area where my family reunion took place, which was like felt like the Confederate South. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of got to disappear at night and like sleep different places. We got no Miami. We got the fuck up out of there. <laughs> we ain't sleeping in that summer camp. We this me usually when Nero was like, I got this friend and stuff. I'm gonna go tell. Like, oh Nero, I don't know. This me. <laughs> Is your friend ready? Like, are we are we heading out? Are we heading out and do the thing? Oh no, we can go get a hotel room. Let's just stay out there and visit your friends. <laughs> but low key, even if, even the one for like, I could have stayed in the camp area. Honestly, Nirm and I just needed some alone time too. Like, you didn't think so? Yeah. Like just on some real talk. Like we just needed some alone time so we can talk and we, just be like uh, that is, like i'm teasing about the cabin and don't get me wrong the cabin wasn't nasty right like it wasn't that or anything you could just tell no one lived in there so it was like dusty and it ain't it, and that's definitely not up to the standards of a shiny suit man right but no. it wasn't nothing like where it's like oh my god where are we the bear no it's not that it was just just like you know you go on vacation and you'd be like oh i thought we were staying at the w so here's the situation <laughs> like that's what it was like i don't want y'all to think we was out in the um um, swamp or anything but it, it was different so here's the situation we hear me and Naomi both work from home yes her mama worked from home yeah her dad worked midnights so everybody here at the house all fucking day every day then we just drove I drove from Toledo <laughs> to Tennessee in the car with them and then you Nero, start, can we listen to different music <laughs> this is, first of all my parents think everything Nero listened to was Kanye West Nero, can we not listen to Kanye West anymore I was like Kanye West has not been on that's J. Cole that's J. Cole <laughs> So then we in the car with their ass. Yeah. And then you. And Mabel. And Mabel. And now I got to share a cabin with them too? <laughs> no, I need to And it's some. dusty. <laughs> I, I got to find some friends. <laughs> <laughs> I got to. Where my friends at? <laughs> so I think that was more of us. The cabin. I think the cabin was more of my mom. And I think she was grieving that. The cabin was maybe 30% of us. Like, but we would have we got over it. But I just think we needed physical space. And it's just like, did we just drive to a whole different state and we still within 100 yes. feet of each other? Like, we just needed space. So we I, we didn't drove 10 hours just to be in the same space <laughs> with each other again? No. It was like deja vu. Was it called Groundhog Day? <laughs> yes. Oh, I need some space. Goddamn. I see y'all ass all day, every day. <laughs> So I think it was more of that for us, and I didn't just steal the deal to be like, you know what? They can have this whole cabin. <laughs> we can go visit friends. We'll come back and forth. We'll we'll whip and run. Um, so that was the interesting part. Um, and then can we talk about all those big trucks down there? Yeah, everybody got F one fifties. Everyone, and I didn't see the allure to it because we borrowed my uncle truck until we got into one. Until we got into it, literally like riding a mountain. <laughs> 
I said, we what got into an F one fifty. I said, this is amazing. I said, oh, this is nice. But something did. Then we that I think that was more the five of the trip where it was just kind of like, and it was cold as hell. Yes, like you know, we in the deep south, like the place where we had like the dinner and the picnic was cool, but it had just undertones of antebellum south, mm-hmm. undertones of like confederate flags some trump signs that i just didn't and that's nothing the family could do right you know what i'm saying yeah. but it's just like mm, yeah no that's a no for me um but then it got to the part where the sits we actually got an airbnb right outside excuse me downtown nashville mm-hmm. and my godparents came and i think that was nice like that was just the sits for me and the only reason i say it was a sits you know what I'm saying? when we pulled up how was it it was a down what? Oh, it was, a, it was like this down wire. the wire wasn't down but you know it was how swinging low like a sweet it was cherry. swinging low and i said you know don't I ain't like, going to the savior. Near, what is this? What the fuck what going on? That? You said you was gonna check this Airbnb. Nigga, I did. I got I can't got no control over this power this line. Yeah. Luckily it wasn't power line. It was cable line. And then nosy ass neighbor seen some black folks in the F one fifty. Hey. Yeah, we don't know what's going on with that line there, but um we called somebody. We put that caution tape up for you. So you see it, right? Because you're able. the thing is you're able to glide, right? You don't mm-hmm. touch it, but you glide right. Yeah, right up under it. Right under it. So that was, I think that's what made it more sense. Then we went downtown. First of all, Nashville is open. Nashville is open like a mug. Bust open. Mm-hmm. Bend over baby oil. Yes. Coconut oil bust open. Down in the valley where the girls, girls get, get naked. naked. <laughs> open. And I can't believe everyone's vaccinated. <laughs> I don't know how folks not vaccinated comfortable doing that. I'm fully vaccinated, y'all, and I had an N95 on. <laughs> fully vaccinated, had an N95 on. Got the good one too. The good one, fully vaccinated, and Shout I had my mask kids. on. And I wasn't even on down there long, so we went down there. We went to the African American Museum of Music, yes, which was gorgeous. Like I completely recommend everyone go. It was super interactive. It's right off what Broadway and Fifth mm-hmm. in Nashville, like. You got to go on a journey of music all the way from, um, like, the continent, right? Africa all the way to current times. I really enjoyed the Wade in the Water period, which really talked about the gospel influence and how they were saying gospel music is, like, the bedrock of, like, black African-American music. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, you know, of course, we got a whole genre of just African influence of the drums from the different tribes and the continent, right? Like, that's an era in itself. But, like, when black people who were born in America – like our music, who was just originally us, it really got it started in that gospel era, yes. in that bluegrass um era. So I truly enjoyed um, like that part and learning because you know I love a good gospel shout. I don't care nobody say it. gospel music, honey. They, I ain't gonna go there, but it was so so nice. Um, great food. I only had one bad food experience, <laughs> but I, I'm counting that out. I'm not even gonna mention it. But literally everywhere else I went was absolutely delicious. Mm-hmm. I have eaten so many biscuits in. Fried chicken varieties. Oh my god, so many hot hot chicken. I done um, had hot chicken and fried chicken so many ways. Yes. How can I count the ways in which I had fried chicken? One. Because Nirm was like, "Oh, I ate fried chicken today. Should I should I get it again?" I was like, "Oh, this gonna taste different." And all I'm did. <laughs> and they did. So I appreciate all of that. We, I don't even know if we should say this on the podcast. I almost felt shamed. What? So my parents, when we went, because my godparents are there. Thank God for them. They kept them entertained, and they went downtown one night. That we did it, and they went to some blues bar. Um, but we actually went. Should I say it? We went to the movies. We went to the movies, we y'all. Went to the movies, <laughs> and I enjoyed it. This shit it was, was amazing. amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Ooh, I it was wait. spaced out. So I remember we said Nashville was bust open, but we weren't in Nashville. We were out suburbs out of it. We were completely spaced out. Mass had to be on. I did feel safe, but guess what type of movie we went to? 4D RX, what's it called? Yes, the 4D movies with the tears that move and it be blowing wind in your ears and water and shit. We went to go see The Quiet Place 2 in 4DX. It was fucking. Listen, if you go to the movies, that's worth it. Look, I can't go see no other movie now. Listen, it it reminded me of like for any of the folks who've been to Universal Studios, and you know how they bring the movies to life, is mm-hmm. that but yes. for two hours. Yes. So the sheet sheet the the seats is rocking, it's going up and down, they shaking, noises in your ear, they splashing water. They got a button where you can turn water on and off. Mm-hmm. They got things at your lid, scrambling at your lid. Right. It's vibrating, it's hitting you in the back. Near them in the um it was a white man at the end of the row. I thought they were gonna get up and run. What happened when that hit when it hit you in the back near them? 
It just surprised me. I wasn't expecting it. Did you? I think it was so worth the money. I'm not sure how much more it was. I'm sure it was a lot more, but do I think it was worth it. Do you want to know? No. Because you didn't pay for the ticket. I did not. I don't want to know because I don't want to ruin me going no more. Oh, okay. Because I might be like, what in the? It's a ticket to Universal Studios. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you then. I enjoyed it though. Did you enjoy it, Daryl? I enjoyed enjoy the it. movie too. Yes. See, that's why I can't tell if the movie was good or just the experience was good. It might have been both. <laughs> <laughs> when you ain't been to the movie in so long. And then you don't even go, you go get the, the, the extreme of the extreme movie. You got the Maybe seats. that's also why people went in there. Because people was like, I ain't paying that much fucking money to go to the movies. This shit. I'm going to go see the extreme of the extreme. My cheers going to move. Yeah. These motherfuckers are going to spray water in my ear and whisper and shit. They ain't spray water in you, but they just spray it on you. <laughs> yes. It was a great experience. Yes. Uh, and then the last thing I want to wrap up the um, fan reunions. It was nice. Like it was good to see family. But some of y'all generation X's and baby boomers, y'all gotta sit down. Like they kept at the end, they kept doing like the speeches. We need the young folks to step up and take the lead, and we gotta come together. Look at us. It's only about the half amount of us as it been before. First of all, we're not having eleven and twelve kids like y'all. No. So it's not that it's less of us. We just use birth control. Mm-hmm. Is that not like? So it's just families are just literally smaller. Yes. Each generation you have seen the family size shrink, especially for people of color. It is shrunken. Mm -hmm. So this is all of us. People not hiding. This is all we got. And also people having kids later, having kids later and having less of them. Two, y'all be toxic as fuck. Of course, no one under 40 is coming because no one wants to be on the, the, the banks of the Biloxi, Mississippi, Biloxi, Mississippi. Ah, Jesus. No one wants to be down in the swamps. No one wants. No one under forty wants to be surrounded by Confederate flags. And nobody come, come above the Mason Dixon line. And nobody under forty wants to deal with respectability politics. Let's call a spade. Also, shout out to Pride Month. People want to come out who the fuck they are. If someone brings their friend, their partner, don't call them their little friend. No, Johnny's gay. <laughs> in the, and Paul is his husband. Right. Not little friends. No. They've been married for six years. Right. Like, that's the stuff they don't want time with. Or Keisha is 35 with no kids and living at home alone. Yes. She don't know if she want to get married. She don't know. Nor right. does she care. Nor does she know if she want kids. Mm-mm. Barbara and Keith know they've been married for this long, don't got kids. Don't ask them about kids. You don't know if they have infertility problems or they made the conscious decision not to motherfucking have kids. Stop it. Yes, Gerald is still in school. Yes. He can't get no job, man. Stop it. Damn. Yes, baby Zion's on their phone. They got anxiety. Mm-hmm. They ain't looking at nothing. No. Just got anxiety. Yes. Don't know what to say to y'all old ass niggas. <laughs> also, look, I'm going to keep going. We don't want to send in checks for dues. No. We don't have checks. <laughs> I owe my uncle $60 now because I don't know where I'm going to get a check from. <laughs> I said, can I Venmo you? Can I cash app you? Can I wire you? I don't <laughs> have checks. And the checks I do is for emergencies. When Not I go to open, send in family reunions. <laughs> when I go open bank accounts and they ask me if I want starter checks, I say, no. no. Shred them. <laughs> I don't want no checks. So that's the thing. We don't, we don't know how to... We don't want to send in dues via uh, money orders and checks. No. We make it Cash App. Make it Venmo. Make it make it all electronic. Yes. Stripe. Whatever. Make all those things. Should I continue, Nero? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Jesus. We don't like the award for most travel. <laughs> those are stupid awards. It is. We don't like that. <laughs> yes. We don't like that. <laughs> Why? Why you get a war because you travel you, the furthest. Then lastly, if you want us to lead it, you got to lead us to lead it the whole way. Yes. You can't have us leading it, then jump in. You got to let us hold it the whole way, mm-hmm. which is meaning we're going to be somewhere above the Mason distance, distance line. Y'all going to have to get a Gmail address. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to learn how to use it. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all we ask. Yes. You know that fancy ass phone you got? It has GPS on it. And what we'll do as millennials and Generation Z's, we'll hold an intro tech class the first night so y'all know what it means. Right. This is some other stuff I'm missing. Location, the lack of use of tech. Our family's just not as big as y'all's. 
you're going to have to embrace the evolution of what the black family looks like. Because mm-hmm. can we have the tea? Y'all don't want the evolution of the black family. You want the, what it was back in the 70s, 60s in the nuclear family when everybody was being toxic as hell to you and uncle had a drinking problem. And, no. Let me stop. We have evolved. Mm-hmm. And we try to be respectful for y'all. Yes. By not showing up. Exactly. Because if not, we're just going to wait till y'all niggas die the fuck out. Well, ooh, damn. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> Call Don't, do that. Don't do that. Too and that's far. not just my family. That's I'm talking to the old whole black family reunion experience. Yes. This is reoccurring things I've talked with other f- black people under the age of 40. To be like, yeah, ain't nobody about to do all that. Yeah. But I think my biggest thing, we can get we can grow and heal to other areas, right? But my biggest thing is I have to be above the Mason distant line and we have to have electronic electron, electron, electron forms of payment. And we have to communicate electronically. Yes. Like, not only electronic forms of payment, like, I want to just fill out a form, and that's how I register. Right. Why is there a phone tree? Why are niggas still doing phone trees? Or you can do that, but I also need what? An email. That's all. I don't care if the uncles, they continue to do that, but I need a different way. Also, I need the location of the family reunion to be within 20 to 30 minutes of an airport. Big facts. Because I think the thing is, it's not the fact that it was in, like, Tennessee. I think it was so deep in the country. country. Because if it was in Franklin and Nashville, I think the experience would have been a lot different. Yes. Because it's closer to the airport, uh, and it's just a lot more things to do. But when you're so deep in the country, and the only thing y'all got is a cookout, a fish fry, or a bonfire, yeah. and then a, a formal dinner, and don't have nothing else planned, it's hard to get excited for that type of shit. Yeah. Like, I want to know what's in the city. I want to know what's in the area. And yeah. if we don't know, y'all need to hire some planning people. <laughs> So shout out to all the family reunions. How is y'all family reunions going? Mine's was a five six. Well, Kevin Samuel's average at best. Average at best. Now I'm talking about keep talking. Well, when yours happen, don't worry about yes, it. Yes, I was like near him. I think it's time for me to tap out. Nope. I'm going to yours. Mm-mm. That'd be nice. Next, homecoming to Michigan. I'm wrapping in my mind of what it would mean to move to Michigan. That's all I got. I think it's some other folks here. Sir Jeffrey, I still need to reach back to Sir Jeffrey. We gonna meet up. Uh, yeah, we gotta send him to India. <laughs> Don't listen to Nero. I've just been what in anxiety and depression. If you want to party with the king, you got to sign a non-disclosure. Well, the me, queen said that. Well, me and um, Sir Jeffrey going to be down at the river walk. <laughs> <laughs> so, king, you am going to be having everybody sign. Sir Jeffrey, you okay with just me <laughs> at the river walk? And then whenever Neil get his letters together, we, I guess we all three can go. I, I already got my letters together. Okay, well, bring your letters. Nayambi don't got one. <laughs> I'm just coming. Um, and then also I meant to um, DM Carlos on social media. I think in one of his stories, he said he think he think he going to move to Michigan. What, what? y'all going to do with Nyambi, Nero, Carlos, and Sir Jeffrey all in the city of Detroit? Oh, my God. That's a podcast in itself. Listen. <laughs> that would be intense. And I think it will be amazing. <laughs> Nigga, that's a podcast network in itself. Right I there. think that will be it. There's a lot of uh, masculine energy there, though. I'm going to have to find somebody else. Yeah. Where are the Detroit women at? Where are the Detroit women podcasters? I, don't know. I think maybe I need to do, you know, I'm in a sisterhood of what? No sister, so. I'll tap into my network. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be pretty fun. I don't be. know how we would unpack that. I don't know what the fuck we would. We would talk about everything from the universe to flowers to fuck shit. Like, I don't even. What would we do to keep ourselves on track? I don't know. We could literally talk about the transition to Detroit. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. Sir Jeffrey, Carlos, y'all would do something. And it don't even have to be nothing. It could be like a once a week or like a once a month. It's like one of those things where it's special mm-hmm. um, yeah. episodes that come out like once a month or something like right. that. And we all put it on our platforms. Mm-hmm. That might be kind of lit. Okay. I think that'll be fun. Let me put that on the back of my head. And lastly, I'm part of, I think it's called the Detroit Cycling Club. Anyway, it's basically the black version of Peloton. Oh. And I, you know, I've been wanting to Peloton, move my body, all that type of stuff. And I was going to get it, but I was like, nah, is there a black business I can support? And there is one. I found it. It's like their own cycling center. And since they're still closed out here, they have it where you can rent their bikes for a month and then also get access to all their live classes on demand classes for 50 bucks. That's what's up. So I was like, you know what? While I'm still figuring out for the next five or six months, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I literally just got delivered two days ago. As y'all are listening to it, hopefully I have finished my first class. If you want to support them, we'll put it on. Uh, y'all know I'm slowly but surely coming to Black Love Matters. I'll be sure to like link them and connect them so you know. But I think if you just type in Detroit Cycling, Detroit Cycling Club, 
You'll be able to find it. It's a business. Uh, I think it's on like Six Miles off Livernois, that area. Mm-hmm. You know the um, what's they call it? The a- Avenue of Fashion. Yeah. You know that area that they 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 um flipping on in Detroit, um out by was it Sherwood Forest? Yes. Is that what I'm saying right. Sherwood Forest. Yeah. It's that area. But if you just type it in, the owner name is Ty. He's absolutely amazing. He sent it in. It was just good to give my money to black businesses. And also, I was just trying to feel. I was trying to feel swole again. Like you know, you just be like fuck. I'm getting there again. There's some sausages your day to keep cooking every week. Oh, my week. goodness. So I'm getting on that bike, and I'm tearing it up. The sausages will be good, though. They suck. But I got to move my body. Mm-hmm. Slowly but so. surely. Nero, what's going on with you? Um, We're working on getting our own space. Wow. So, yes, we've been at appearance. Like I said, we've seen their ass all day, every day. <laughs> And not a negative thing, no. right? Like, I don't even think it's one of those things where, like, we're not running from it. Mm-hmm. But you know how you come to the point and be like, oh, yes, this served its purpose. And I am grateful. And I think it was a smart move for us to do this. Yes. But I think now. Long term, though, it's not going to work. I want to walk around in my draws. <sighs> you know, Nero, you know, Nero, I'm a Mabel. Mabel love to be naked. I want to walk Mabel around. Mabel hate a collar. I hate to, I want Nem- to walk Nem- around hate a pant. in my drawers. When I come in from the world, I just want to take my pants off at the door. Yeah. And just hang them there. You can't do that. And just be free. And any of my parents, when you're living with people, you don't do that. No. <laughs> just don't do that with people you live with outside of your partner. That's what I want. Even if you have spot. kids, I would argue you got to be, care- be careful of the nudity. When it gets to a certain age, you got to be careful. I already... <laughs> <laughs> to walk around the house with just my underwear on. It's something freeing about that. Get you some lounge. Niram don't even want to wear lounge. No. I said, Niram, get you some nice lounge. No. And a nice little soft shirt. I want to wear these drawers. Niram want to wear his foot balloons. Which, how you call them? Fruit balloons. Oh, my goodness. I want to wear these drawers. And you can't say white beater no more. And an A shirt. Oh, that's what it's called? Yes. That's not just an undershirt. No, they call it. it you think niggas are performer. It is an undershirt. It's called an A shirt. What's an undershirt? Just a regular white tee. Oh, and that's the tank top. Yes. So that's a tank top. That's not a tank top. What is the definition of a tank top? They don't call it a tank. They call it A shirts because it makes the letter A. Masculinity is toxic. It's a tank top. I am ready. <laughs> I am ready. So, you know, we're just looking at places and things of that sort to try to figure out what we're going to do as um, as we too. try to figure out where, where our next move is. Because I think one of the biggest things that we're having trepidation is, is, you know, I, I'm all for coming back to Detroit. Naomi is still hesitant. Mm-hmm. So we've been going back and forth about that. So I'm just trying to figure that out. Because it's multiple things, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like snow. I'm talking about negative things. Of course, y'all know the positive things. Family, all that type of stuff. But it's like, I don't like the snow, really. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't have community. But I do feel like I have a, a stronger community professionally and personally in California. Familiarly here, of course. But is different with family, right? You know, I'm really lucky. You know, I was talking mess about my family reunion, but I will say overall, my family's more su- above average in support. Mm-hmm. So meaning you can go off and do your thing. We don't have to talk often, but if you need something, you could pick up the call, phone and call 80% of them and they'll say yes or no and they'll follow through on what they say. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why I've been able to kind of come in and out, but that's a different type of relationship, right? You know what I'm saying? That's different than having folks that you just kick it with daily. Like, I don't think I'm at that point with my family where I can just pop up at people's houses and just chill, yeah. which will be the benefit, I think, of staying in Michigan. I don't think I've gotten that. Not that I can't work to that point, but, like, that's a little strange for me. Like, I feel like I got more people in California I could call and be like, brunch? This? this? Right? And they're like, yes, of course. But, you know, family in Detroit. I'm still learning Detroit love language. And I also learning Detroit schedules, right? Like getting back used to like when the plants go on vacations or when the plants shut down or when mm-hmm. they open back up, right? You know, it's just certain businesses. Like an automotive industry is the puller, right? And I'm just not used to the norms of the folks around that because like they're in deep in their career too. So like they got they looking at me like, child, don't you know these mugs just open? I'm I'm working 12, 15 hours a day in respect, right? But I'm not just privy to that. So I'm the one calling stupid on Thursday. Hey, I'm gonna go get a happy hour. Right. I'm making tacos. I'm making tacos. And they're like, bitch, I just worked 16 hours. Right? And rightfully so, you say yeah. no. So it's like that type of stuff is hard for me. So it's just one of the things that we're just trying to, and it, it's more stuff than that, too. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it, it's just one of the things that we're trying to figure Pay out, like, good. what <laughs> what what it looks like, right? Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, you know, I got a friend who's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who's who, who's about to get engaged. He's getting married. He he's ready. Every time I see this dude, he got no heart heart emoji eyes in his face. 
He done had the heart emoji eyes since I met him <laughs> in undergrad. What are you talking? <laughs> so he ready. So it's only a few men I met in my life who, not including Miriam, who be like, I want to be what is what the New York from? Um, <laughs> I want Love my it? I want my name, name dropped. dropped. Meaning I, I want to be, be married. married. I want my Egg eggs broken, cracked or cracked. Meaning I want to be pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> what else he say? That's how these men is. <laughs> No, that's what they say to the women. I want your name dropped, <laughs> meaning I need to marry you. I want to crack your ass, meaning I want to give you a baby. Like that's how they is. No, but you know, <laughs> ain't no wrong with that. It's it's very exciting, right, to see that. Um, especially you know, since we've been together for so long, to so actually see somebody like go through their whole yeah uh, thing, like yeah, you know, I got the ring. We've been picking out uh-huh. rings, yada yada yada. Yeah, you know, as he's been. Uh, engaged before and had some yes. some things you know one of the we'll things go listen back to previous podcast we ain't gonna get a number just in case they listen no. but but one thing you know a couple of things a couple of questions i had and <laughs> near go ahead let me stop this is your check-in this is not just like i did my family reunion you do your friend i said is she an atheist <laughs> he said no she this is someone who really loves the lord and yes they were engaged to an atheist and did not know and all of us just had mouth this is what we were like what no no, it was no words. It was just like this. Oh, we oh just was shit. trying to be real neutral. Damn. Because if you, okay, ain't no problem with an atheist. But last time I checked, you be on that altar. Right. Is last that, time I checked, you love the Lord. So is that okay with you? It's okay with me. But is it okay with you? Look. Do they so we, be, we got real quiet to be like, oh, cool. Look, is there an atheist? Do they love, look, have you asked them that? Like, have you asked her that? Explicitly. Are you, you an atheist? I said, you need to do, like, the right hand of fellowship. What like, would it be? Like, do you believe? That Jesus Christ died for your sins. And, da, 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 like, you need to do the right hand of fellowship with this person. Right. Do you believe in the Father? What Son the, and the Holy Ghost. Do you believe in that? <laughs> do you believe in Easter? <laughs> <Do> you, <laughs> let me stop. Like, that What's was, your favorite scripture? <laughs> Jesus wept. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it, it's just one of those things, right? And it's, I, I think one of the things that's kind of shocking to me because I, is that, you know, the, just the length that they've been together. Mm, so, you know, yeah. they've been together for maybe about two or three months and they're like <laughs> talking, you know, engaging. during a pandemic. Yeah. Though, that's, I think that two to three months doesn't surprise me because mm-hmm. I think it happens. We getting a little older, right? Like, yeah. you know, we, we getting up in age and shouldn't be taking all day. But I think the pandemic was like, was we our best selves doing? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You know, and the thing is, I don't know how to feel about that because either, I've either. been with you for so long, so I don't really don't know. Me either. But I know, you know. It he, can work. It, it, it can definitely work because I've seen. I got an uncle. I've seen quicker, like, relationships that yeah. led to marriage. Um, But it, it, it just got me thinking, like. It's just a pandemic for yeah. me. That's the only thing. that If it was just normal standards, I'm like, yeah, if it is, do what you're going to do. But the pandemic was. I think it can go either way with the pandemic, like. Are we, I haven't decided, have the pandemic totally shifted who we are or just put a mask on temporarily? I haven't yeah, decided. I don't know I don't, either. I don't, even for myself personally, I, I don't, I don't know. And you know, the thing is, I'm going to be supportive. Like, oh, of course. I'm there. Always, always, always. We just Whatever you need me to be, you know, I, that that's what I'm going to be. Yeah. You know, it was just one of those things like, oh, okay. Oh, shit. Wait, did you go through your questions? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your look, Lord, Savior? <laughs> look, <laughs> did you? Near I'm a deacon now. <laughs> look. Y- y'all know how I feel, and that's why I was like, "I know this might be too soon." But did you ask her if she's an atheist or not? <laughs> what did he say? What did he, <laughs> he, just, did he, he laugh? Just out, oh, <laughs> laughing because you know that can be a sticking point for some people. It is, and some people it's not. Though I think that's when he first because I remember when you was like, "Yeah, she's an atheist," and I'm just like, "Oh, okay." So that does that mean they're going to have a non traditional ceremony or? And he was like, "Ain't no ceremony." I said, Ain't no oh, ceremony. Okay. <laughs> so that was one of the things. Like, did you ask? Like, I'm just trying to trying to be the bruh. <laughs> Cause we still got time. Look, do she want kids? Cause that's the second marriage mm-hmm. fell through. Did she think I would have children and wreck this body? What? Do she no. want to have kids? Uh-huh. I forgot what the third question. I was. forgot. The, we need to leave it alone. That way, it's not traceable. But those were the, 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 the two things, and I'm excited for him. I'm, I'm very excited to me see, too. you know, where it comes from. From from what he, you know, from what he's told me, you yeah, know, I haven't they had, love each other. I haven't uh, met the. Um, I haven't met her yet because mm-hmm. I know she's been out of town. We've been traveling, mm-hmm. but you know, I would love to meet her and, and just see. She not meet. I mean, yeah. she she part of the family now. Yeah, it's it's, it's undone for me, right? Mm-hmm. It ain't, especially once you marry in. I don't got much talk back. Yeah, marrying in and having kids, I really don't got a choice. Yeah, it's already love. Now I might talk some shit, mm-hmm. but you. <laughs> <laughs> 
but you win. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's that, man. And, you know, and I think it's just exciting to just see that. Yeah. And see that grow. Because he's happy. Because he's very happy. Yeah. And I think he's yearning for that, like that next level of like love commitment. and partnership and commitment. Intimacy. Right? It intimacy, is a level so. of intimacy when you get to that point. So I'm happy for them too. Yeah. Um, but I think just going on a whole journey, we just like, oh, like we happy, but we trying to also be play it cool. So if we be like, fuck it, we be like, fuck it then. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> like, you know, so fuck it. Like we inside, yeah, but yes. fuck it. Like, that's what it is. Like yeah. I'm trying to, like, I don't, I'm trying to play it neutral. Yeah. Because I don't want to like, I'm just trying to be the level headed. Uh, not, I don't even think level headed. I'm just trying to play neutral. Yeah. So if it's like, yeah, we done, we off. Cool. Cool. But if like we go on with this, cool, I'm be there. Cool, I'm there. Yeah. So either way, so I think that's how I'm really playing it, is just this whole, just being neutral about it. Yes. And be like, yeah, like I'm excited for you. Yeah. If if, if, if y'all believe y'all love all y'all lives and y'all gonna go home and go, go for with it, it. go for it. Down. I'm there. Yeah. Y'all both in y'all mid thirties. We all getting older. We all getting we older. Need eggs cracked. Eggs need to be cracked. Uh huh. Go ahead and crack them eggs. Yep. But if you like. Yo, this ain't gonna work out. Cool. All right, cool. Let's talk about exit strategy. Yep. This is my thing, you sis. Right. Let's try to take them eggs we back. Can't up. be friends. Don't text me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it, it's 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 just interesting. Are you gonna be in the wedding party? Yes, he want me to be best man. Ooh, that got two duties near him. I know. And you know, outside been closed, so I imagine everyone's going over the top for all celebrations. Outside been closed, and I ain't been to Detroit in years, so I don't even know what's popping anymore. Ooh, you better get to researching. Sir Jeffrey, you know. I don't even know who the who the top strippers in Detroit anymore is. Be careful with them strippers. Make sure you see that card. <laughs> I ain't mad at the stripper, but you know. Yeah. So that's There's going a lot of on. Droplets in the air. Um, <laughs> what else is going on? Just running. You know, I'm training for a, a big marathon. Um, and it's it's just different out here running in Michigan. A it's all this goddamn mm-hmm. pollen, the pollen, and cottonwood is it? shit, and everything the else. Unmatched, this man. Year. Or maybe it's just normal. We just not used to it. But it, this shit is ridiculous. It makes you hide in the house, Paula. Yes. Don't you make you want to leave? Oh, no. I just wake up in the morning and have headaches and shit. Like this is some bullshit. This is when you got to get on like the allergy medicine. Right yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then other than that, you know, Naomi mentioned it earlier is that you know our program assistant is leaving for a minute. Um, and in addition to that, like I've had other people leaving in my in my company too. Mm-hmm. Made me kind of say it. It's sad and glorious at the same time because, you know, they're moving on to bigger and better things. Well, so I was going to say, that's what you want. It ain't, now, people are running away from because they're yeah. tired of your bullshit. That's they're not I'm running away because of their bullshit. It's yeah. just like, hey, you know, I have this opportunity and things of that sort. And it's like, you know, do what you got to do. Because they're still in the network, right? Yeah. They might not be working with you or for you, but they still going to always be in the network. And you'll be surprised how things come full circle. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things now where it's like, all right, I've been working in my business, time to work on my business, but also figure out like what I'm doing next because, yes. you know, in a matter of months, like two, three assistants that I had yeah. or, or staff members left because of other opportunities. Uh-huh. And it's a sad thing, but you know, it is what it is in business is business. And, it, and it's good. Um, so now is one of the things now where I'm trying to figure out like, what is my next move and next steps as I start to grow this business? Because I, I, I've also learned a lot from them Yeah, and trying to figure out like, what the hell I'm going to do next, uh-huh. right? Because the business is still going to go. I'm still doing bigger and bigger things out here. I'm having meetings and access to brands that I probably would have never thought I was going to have access to. That's amazing. And now I'm just trying to figure out, like, what's the next move, right? Uh-huh. And, like, I've been hiring all these part-time individuals. Like, maybe it's time for me to go full deep time, in that deep yeah. land yeah. and find a, a full-time person. Yeah. And I also think, like, that's a whole nother level of commitment as well. Mm-hmm. By being in the business and being a business owner, because now it's like you get an employee, yeah, you get an employee, and their pay is is you're accountable nice to their pay, yeah, yeah. Versus like an hourly yeah. part time person, that's like, oh, you don't work you cool, flex up and down, yeah, yeah, you don't work cool. I ain't got to pay you, yeah. But when you, and you get, can have agreements, like yeah. let's pull it back this week and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff, yeah. But when you committing to somebody full, full time, time, you can't be like, ooh, right, mid July, ooh, why about you take an unpaid vacation, right? No, ooh, no, no, no. Ooh, th- look, this money ain't looking as good as no, I'm no, no. That ain't how I work with full time. No, 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 no. But also, the other thing is, it also forces you to make sure you got enough shit for their ass to do for these whole mm-hmm. forty hours. Yeah, so they can a, sit there and twiddle their thumbs. So it's a whole nother That's level true. of accountability. That's true for you yeah. as an employer and as a boss doing shit. Yes. That I've never even thought about. 
but those are the things that I'm thinking about as I'm thinking about, you know, hiring my first full time assistant mm-hmm. to do multiple things, right? Exactly. Is that shit? I barely don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say it like that, but like sometimes it's like, damn. Yeah. I really gotta think about like what I'm gonna have you do mm-hmm. for these forty and hours. When, accountability and when. mechanisms, yeah, channels of stuff. communication. Yeah, that's what it and means yeah, to be a boss. And then it's also it's like you know looking other where other places to get creative, right? You know, I'm all in my um my capitalism bag, right? Like there's this whole term of like arbitrage and how there's a lot of people who are hiring individuals from like Venezuela or Mm -hmm. um, the Philippines and things of that sort. And like, um, you know, paying them away to a fair wage to them, but it's lesser in the U S and things of that sort. So like going through these applications and understanding that, cause like, I think that's one of the things that also has happened, right. Where somebody, some people have applied from uh, the UK Mm Mm-hmm. And like their salary is like oh blank 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 UK dollars, and I'm like oh shit that's that's more in US. Yep, and that gonna work. Yep. So just really trying to understand that, right? It's it's it's, it's definitely a beast. So for all the other business owners out there who are working and dealing with VAs and things of that sort, hit your boy up. Provide, hit me up with some advice on like how you doing it. How are you making it work with your first full time employee and so on and so forth? Or if you're interested in it. Hit us up and let me know what what questions do you have? Because yeah. maybe I can still provide some type of resource yeah. of like the things that I'm going through uh, and the things I learned throughout this whole process. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, to add another thing on my plate, Niram is about to be a yoga teacher. <sighs> so namaste niggas. Namaste niggas. Stay need, tuned for we that. We need to copyright that. Namaste, Negroes. <laughs> Namaste, ne- Negroes and Negresses. Right. So stay tuned to that. I'm actually going through my uh, going through yoga teacher training and shit. You know, trying to get trying to get my Namaste on. Uh-huh. And then the last thing is like, you know, we, we talked about it, like big things that's happening with Black Love Matters, and I and I think one of the things that that's been toying in the back of my head is whether or not we've outgrown the name Black Love Matters. Mm, like a name change. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And really trying to understand like. It served its purpose for these past four years, but are we ready to move on from that name and have something that stands on its own two feet? Something that can be trademarkable, something that we can Mm -hmm. um, actually sell merch to, so on and so forth, versus something like Black Love Matters where that cannot be trademarked. Yeah, because that was never the intention Yeah, um, before. Like, that was, so y'all know that the intention was for it to be for everyone. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it, it was not for sale. It was just us being completely raw. But I agree. Like, we're at that point where we're going to evolve. Like, how do we, you know, niche in more to Niram and Nyambi? Right. And it might just literally be Niram and Nyambi. So, if y'all got some names, yep. email us. Like Love Matters. We'll like- send you one in um, Niram's mama sweet potato pie. It's the only <laughs> conversation you get. For <laughs> if we choose your name. You get a sweet potato. Y'all remember that? Oh, I'm the OG listeners. <laughs> If I remember you, we was going through it. Yes. And Nero Mama ain't know what to do to support us, but send us food. We, she and sent us well, like six, six sweet potato pies. She sent us six sweet potato pies. Who we send those to? We, people who asked for them. I know. If <laughs> if we sent you a sweet potato, potato pie, pie, hit us up. Are, if you're still listening. They're still in their freezer. <laughs> Let us know how that's. Remember, sweet we said baby clothes to people? Yeah, for your, for your baby shower. Your fake baby shower. <laughs> Listen, that's in the cut. Yes. That's where the community was close knit. It was. We all knew. All fifty of us knew each other. Yes. <laughs> so it's been a lot going on, but if we sent you a sweet potato yeah. pie, shout out. Send us a voicemail. <laughs> um, other than that, you know, you want to hop into a little pillow talk? Just a little pillow talk. Um, just to get us back going and rolling. We were gonna just unpack our four years of podcasting. We're gonna do this, but do we want to get into this bonnet gate? <sighs> I don't, but we will. Yes, there has been multiple reports. Well, as a woman who actively wear a bonnet, I will let you go first. I wear a bonnet to bed, be clear. Um, and just because <laughs> I don't wear a bonnet outside don't mean I I don't even look twice at people who wear bonnets outside. Wearing a bonnet outside is equivalent to when Negroes wear do-rats to me. Like, I understand what Mother Monique is coming from, Auntie Monique is coming from. She is a generation at, she is from the generation of respectability politics. She is the generation of do it because I said so. She is a generation, uh, if you don't do it, the consequences are severe. Mm -hmm. Hers and prior. So I want to put respect on that. And also appreciate her standing in her truth. Like, I do think we need more elders coming up, as she thinks she was doing. 
not think she did was pulling our slip like your slip is showing right like I, I want us to keep this open dialogue in the black community especially us as black women but us as black women now look come on to the table we don't like being corrected <laughs> I, I, that is a trait yeah, sure of black women sometimes when people be like nah bitch I don't like that we like bitch I don't like you and <laughs> I don't think we need to go to that extreme and I think sometimes we do I think we can we need to learn to live in the gray with that's how you feel. Respect to you. But queen, mother, sister, I'm going to move in this way. Mm-hmm. And since that's not actively harming myself or others, I'm going to continue to move in this way. And can we still love each other? So as a black women, I think we just need to lean into the agree to disagree a little bit more. We all don't have to be um, one unanimous vote for how this go because long term short do i think there is one universal right or wrong way no. meaning i do think there is one universal way. like i think everyone should wash their ass right like we can universally agree that ass washing is a good thing right bonnet wearing i don't know if there's a universal right or wrong answer like i don't i don't know mm. i know how i personally feel right i know how other people's personally feel it don't make me lose sleep either way or not but folks was really getting tied up in a feelings for folks who've been under the tree monique came on and did a um ted talk on how if she see one more of you raggedy bitches walking through <laughs> walking through TSA with, with, with a bonnet on. and the dirty ass flip flops and <laughs> okay I'm, she ain't say all that she said it definitely more with kindness that she tired of it and the way she then connected that to like at first I thought she was just joking right I thought she was just doing a little kit skit for us and getting on off right but then I think where people got to feel in a little certain type of way she started then associating bonnet wearing a nasty ass house shoe wearing with it's not it's it's, it's not house shoes. I'm it's joking. Thugs, though. I'm joking. Furry shoes. I'm mm-hmm. joking. That's why I thought Monique was going. I'm joking. She wasn't. Though. My my adjectives I'm using is all out of jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, but wearing like your, you know what I'm talking about. Them floor, and they, sometimes they ain't us. They be expensive. Like don't yeah. be like Gucci and how you say Balenciaga Nero. Balenciaga. <laughs> really old listeners we went to vegas for neon's birthday and we walked went to the high-end mall and he said i never knew how he said it. you thought valenciaga was spelled huh what a v yeah i said no baby it's valencia he said i thought it was valenciaga i did niggas. Wow. and anyway but i think people start to get rubbed the wrong way when she tried it to self-worth right and caring about yourself and putting effort into your appearance and representing yourself as a queen and that type of stuff and i think that's what people were like bitch wait just because i wear a bonnet don't mean i ain't no queen like the queen wear a crown this is my crown blah 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 blah. so i think that's where people want to left field and i don't have much to say about it but what, what i will call out is i understand what monique was saying i think it was a little bit of a reach to say if you wear a bonnet if you wear furry shoes if you wear long nails you don't have self worth you don't care about yourself what i think is triggering though is not the bonnet is it's not the furry shoes it's not the long nails but i think it's the behaviors that are traditionally come along with it mm. or of the people who wear those bonnets right mm. i think of people over here just wearing their bonnets and their fuzzy sip slippers are in the corners reading the bible at the airport we wouldn't be saying this mm. right but honestly the triggering behavior for me is y'all who walk down the hall was um iphone 15s so the newest ones but be on voice uh, speaker phone and talking loud as fuck and i can't even hear my order at krispy kreme like that's what's <laughs> triggering to me I can't hear my order, sis, because you're talking to Kenneth. A scheme. And, and the thing is, you don't have a raggedy phone where it's like, oh, maybe your, your, you know what I'm talking about? Your microphone don't work. You have the iPhone 23. You have the newest phone. Simply talk to them as a human. That's what actually triggers me. And I think you have low self-worth. <laughs> But the low key is, I think that's generation X is all the way to millennials. I see doing that ghetto shit. I hate when people had a phone on speaker and talk to people or listening to videos. Put on a headphone. I don't want to hear it. Now I'm on a tangent. But what I think Monique was getting at is the behaviors that we, I do think speaks volumes to self-worth, self-efficacy and how we carry ourselves, right? I think about all these motherfuckers who is, and this is white, black, everybody. I think about all these motherfuckers who is fucking at the WWE at the fucking airport and the Ooh, airplane. it's on site for niggas. Niggas is fighting at the airports. They is walking through on speakerphone. They cussing motherfuckers out. Like, that's the shit that is like, yeah, that's low self-worth. Ain't nobody tell you to come on out here, pay all this money to fight. 
You are not Logan Paul. You are not Floyd Mayweather. We don't need to see all that bullshit. It's on site for the ops. Right? And even beyond the fight, ain't nobody trying to hear all that cussing and fussing. I'm trying to sneak into Mexico. Like, no one wants to hear that. So I think I think if Monique made a slight pivot, folks would have heard it a little bit more. And mm-hmm. that's how I received it, right? I received it. It ain't the bonnet, right? It ain't the physical head hairdress of it it is the behaviors that have been associated with it that is triggering and we need to do better and we need to tap each other on the sister so, shoulder sis and be like sis don't come all the way up here to fight don't come to miami um don't come to mia or dt these airports and start fighting the agents don't don't do that you don't come here and then put on your youtube on loudspeaker for everybody we don't need to hear um what's going on like that i think it's more of that i think if she would have focused more on the behaviors than the actual pieces of items mm-hmm. Um, people want to get his trigger, right? Because there's a long history of the policing of black people's bodies yes. in, in wardrobes and what's appropriate, not appropriate, that I think we went on that tangent instead of saying, instead of Monique being like, stop fucking fighting at the airport. Yes. Stop fucking coming up in here causing all this ruckus unnecessarily. Don't you know that's a federal crime? You're going to go to jail, right? Like, that's the <laughs> stuff. <laughs> not a fucking bonnet. Like, not the bonnet, right? But I think sometimes we tend to send the people in the bonnets who... who be fighting. Fighting, right? Like, but that don't mean the bonnet bad, right? right. <laughs> Correlation is not does, causation. Is not causation. <laughs> but there is some behaviors we need to tighten up as a black community to be like, listen, sis, <laughs> or bruh, or whatever, right? That's just like saying all people who wear do rag and tims is bad and violent. No, right. But do sometimes nigga who wear do rags and tims get violent? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just a difference, right. and when we say overarching statements, we put everybody in those categories where I don't think it is. But you know, I'm a millennial. I'm not about policing people's bodies. I'm not about policing what people wear. I'm about breaking the, the generation curses of respectability politics. I, don't get me wrong, I am be false for it sometimes. But sure I am, do. I'm trying to be very aware, like the generations these are teaching me to be very aware of those, the colonization, the colonization, right, of the norms. And I'm willing to be challenged on some of that. And I am letting some of my norms that I had maybe two, three years or five years ago go because I need to grow and evolve, right. right? Like I need, I don't want to be the old auntie talking about, well, bitch, if you just would have pressed your hair, right? Like I wanted that to, I want that to die with my generation. I don't want Generation Z and beyond being, I feel like they got to come to job interviews and had a hair straighten, mm-hmm. right? Like I want to break those types of things for the, the circle. And for that, you got to be open. And lastly, I forgot who said, that. I think it was Ella Villain from the internet. Monique, you, you tap them Generation Z's on the shoulder if you want. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tap the ones who be fighting. Cause we ain't address behaviors. <laughs> See, if we address behaviors, we could have tapped them on the shoulder, mm-hmm. but just tapping them on. And then what you want them to do? Because their hair not done under it. Or maybe it is done and they don't want to mess it up before they hit the Miami. But what? So what you want to do the whole outfit change? Then they're going to get naked in the airport that we really are going to jail. Because <laughs> that's how generations these are rebel. Right. Oh, you want me to take it off? Yes. I'll, I'll take, take it, it off. <laughs> now she naked. Right. <laughs> you can't be naked in public. <laughs> Those are laws. Unless it's for art. No, I'm talking about at what's um ATL Airport. Where is it at? What's the name of the airport? I forgot what it's at. Uh, I'm talking about the airport right down the street from that cake place. You cannot <laughs> strip. You can don't let Nirm gas you. You cannot get naked in public places. I would argue even sometimes for art. Make sure you got a permit. Unless it's for art. Make sure you got a permit. Don't just be stripping in the park. Then some children walk by. Now you on the list. So, Monique, don't be tapping on them Generation Z's. Some of them on edge. Niren, what's your thoughts on Bonnet Gate? I don't know if that's some of thoughts, but that was just me being middle management and trying to bridge the gap between the Z's and the X's. I can't take advice from a 40, 50-year-old woman who calls her husband daddy. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Love a is ever evolving. That Peace. Set up. She do be daddying, and that is a pet peeve in Niambi. That's... No- I can't. That's she do be daddy. I can't take advice from a 40 or 50 year old woman. Maybe she don't call him daddy anymore. mm, Who calls her husband daddy? Do you call him daddy in public? Probably. I don't. I don't. I can't. I can't roll with nothing that you're saying. I can't take you serious. I. What about your self worth? Because you letting another grown man who's not your daddy raise you up. Oh my goodness. So. Well. Was it, was it Pastor John said that his wife 
uh, Vander, what's her name? I, I forgot. Aventer raised him too. See, those are behaviors we need to address. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't Bonnet Gate. I can't, I can't, I can't take advice from that. Bonnet when, Gate. When, when you're talking about respectability t- politics, meanwhile, you fifty year old calling another grown man daddy in public. In public. Now, what you do in bed? <sighs> Anything else? <laughs> nope, but that's all I got. <laughs> Lastly, four years of potting. Don't get me wrong. Our next episode, we could probably gonna go deeper into this because I think it'll be our actual anniversary. But mm-hmm. what's your ending thoughts before we get up out of here? Oh man, um, it's been four years. I think the, the fact that we've been this consistent for four years is a feat in itself. Mm. Um, and I say that because, like, when you think about podcasting and stuff, like. It, it is literally a consistency game, yes, right? Yes. Like you either, you either um, be, you know, you're either a celebrity or you someone who just getting it out the mud. Mm. And I think one of the things about being consistent and being disciplined is moving past the quote unquote boredom of doing the same thing consistently over and over again. Mm. Like without, like without seeing the result that you're looking for. Uh-huh. So I think it's a feat in itself. I think it's something that I've never, I don't know. Initially, you know, I didn't know because when we started this thing, you was like, I don't know, a year and out, so on and so forth. But I was like, okay, let's keep doing this. But I think that we've made so many connections uh-huh. like to people who are family, not to family, but people who we see as family and so on and so forth, right? And I think for me as a marketer, right, and it, it was more of an experiment for myself to see, like, can you make something pop that does not have a face behind it uh, uh-huh. and make it about what we say versus how we look? Yeah. So those are some of the things that I got when it comes to four years. And I, I'll be able to expound more on the next episode. What you got? No, similar to you. Like, I just I think this was the prototype or the pilot for me to have see what happens if I just let it all go as y'all know I'm a careful black girl and everything I do is usually pretty like strategic and calculated and I've thought about it but this is something I did and I just literally went with it in my whole heart and really followed that and that's just been a different experience with me and I plan on seeing like what does the next iteration of that look like and knowing that you truly can just be all of you in a vulnerable way and still be well received. So I've just been so appreciative for the platform to allow that. And the podcast has continuously grounded me for that. Cause there's no way, there's no way to be fake, right. Or there's no reason to be fake right. to be able to do it. So I'm just grateful in that. And I'm curious, like, what does it mean to amplify that then? Absolutely. So that's what I'm thinking about, but yeah. we'll have to go deeper in that. We'll I definitely just wanted to, to acknowledge the four years in we back after two weeks. I thought it was just a nice way to bring it full circle. Absolutely. To submit your black love story, go to black to submit a question for kitchen table talk. Shoot us an email at black at gmail.com. And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. Talk to you later. Remember love is ever evolving. Peace. Peace.